Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity. If you're a college student, then I have some great news for you. Microsoft is hiring software engineering interns right now, and this is a brand new opportunity. The link to apply has just been opened yesterday, and the link to apply is in the description box along with the resources. But before you apply, make sure you watch the entire video to have the best chance of getting shortlisted and the best chance of clearing the interview. Now, whenever there's an opportunity, it is highly recommended that you apply as soon as possible. And whenever an opportunity arises off campus, I make a video on this channel. So you will be seeing it first on this channel. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any opportunities that are there around you, especially if you're a college student or if you're a fresher, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any opportunities. All right, so let's get into it. So the first round obviously will be resume shortlisting. And let me be very clear, Microsoft's interviews are not that tough, but getting shortlisted into Microsoft is a bit difficult, right? Because Microsoft is very up and demanding about the shortlisting criteria. So you have to make sure that your resume is of the highest quality possible. You cannot be lacking at all in your resume. So what do you need to put in your resume? First of all, your resume should be ATS friendly. Make sure that your ATS score is high in your resume. If you want some ATS friendly templates, if you want some ATS grading websites, again, everything is in the description box along with the link to apply. So make sure that your resume is ATS friendly. Apart from that, put your coding profiles. Microsoft cares about your coding profiles. If you're good at coding, Microsoft will care about that. So if you're good at any coding website, if you're good at lead code, you have a good rating. If you're good at code forces or anywhere else, if you've solved a lot of problems, then show that in your resume. All right. Highlight your coding profile, especially if you have a good rating or if you have a good ranking in any of the prestigious coding competitions like ICPC or something of that sort. Now, apart from that, your project section matters a lot. So you cannot have clone projects. You cannot have boring projects in your resume. Make sure that you have some really good projects. Now, I've made an entire video about how you can make such projects, but your project should be sort of like a real world scenario and make sure that you deploy your project Put the link in the description along with the GitHub link. So your project section matters a lot. Apart from that, make sure your resume is not cluttered. Make sure there's not unnatural spaces. Make sure it's evenly spaced out and make sure that you choose a good template. So if you do all of this and you have some decent work cred, then definitely your resume will get shortlisted. And if you want to make your resume even better, then just so you know, I also do resume reviews on my top mate. The link to that also will be in the description box. But in a nutshell, make sure it's ATS friendly, highlight your coding profiles and work on your project section. These three things are extremely important if you want to get shortlisted. Now, after you get shortlisted, you'll have to go across the Microsoft interviews. And let me tell you, Microsoft interviews are not that difficult, especially if you compare it to some of the other same or upper level companies. It is not that difficult. It is difficult, but you can easily clear it if you have enough practice in DSA problem solving and some of the other topics that we will be talking about right and if you want to know more about the interview process then i'll give some interview experiences articles and links in the description box so you can check out the entire interview process and get some insights from there as well so make sure that you go through the description box after watching the video all right so in a nutshell around 60 to 70 percent of your interview will be dsa so dsa is going to be extremely important for this interview there's no beating around the bush dsa is important in this and other 30 to 40 percent will be all about your projects, you see his fundamentals. And again, it depends on the interviewer, right? What kind of questions he might ask, but generally it can be about your resume. It can be about CS fundamentals. And of course it can be about your projects. So speaking more about DSA, because obviously DSA is a major chunk of your interview. So what are the important topics? Of course you have first graph and trees. And let me tell you, Microsoft loves to ask questions about trees in almost all the interview experiences I have seen. There is always a tree question or a graph question. So make sure that you're pretty good with trees and graph. And of course, the resources to learn both these topics and other topics will be in the description box again. So make sure that you're good with graph and trees. DP can be possible, but I have not seen DP being asked as much as graph and tree. So focus more on this topic. Of course, you should learn DP as well. Just at least the bare minimum, you should learn all the standard problems. I right? just go through them. Apart from that, you need to be good with array algorithms and array problems like prefix some array sorting base, two pointer, binary search. And then apart from that, you need to be good with string based algorithm, like sliding window, some, you know, string operations, two pointers on string, these sort of things you need to be well aware of. 
and of course you need to be very good with the programming language that you are using if you're using c++ make sure you're very good with the syntax make sure you're very good with stl if you're using java make sure you're very good with java collections and all the other properties and all the other applications in java right so you need to be a master of the programming language that you will be using because of course there will be follow-up questions about what you're using and how you are using it right more important topics will be in the description box but make sure that you focus well on dsa i'll also give some microsoft tagged interview problems in the description box make sure that you practice them and apart from that if you've done striver sheet well and good but try to do the medium and hard problems as much as you can from the important topics from striver sheet as striver sheet is at this point the standard of the interview problems because most of it will be similar to the problems in striver sheet or you know a variation of it basically apart from that cs fundamentals again i'll give some resources in the description box but in general just go through the interview questions of each of the cs fundamental thing like you have os op cn and all of these things op and os are pretty much a little bit more of importance here so make sure that you go through the top interview questions make sure you go through geeks or geeks last minute notes and make sure that you go through the resources that are there in the description box now again for your project you can expect questions about your project about what have you done in your project so i've made an entire video about how you can explain your project to the interviewer so that it basically blows his mind off blows his or her mind off so make sure that you watch that video as well because of course there can be questions or follow-up questions about your projects how you've built it why you've built it so i've explained all of that in that video again the link to that video will be in the description box now some tips about the interview for a company like microsoft it is extremely essential that not only you understand the problem well and not only you arrive at the solution but you make sure that you do it in a way that the interviewer is satisfied so start with the brute force approach explain your understanding of the problem and make sure that you don't understand the problem in the wrong way so explain your understanding of the problem start with a brute force approach explain the brute force approach and then start slowly optimizing it from there all right you have to show that whatever the question is whatever the data structure algorithm you're using you have good knowledge of it and you understand it well all right because this is going to be extremely important even if you come across the solution but if you don't know the algorithm well or if you make the interviewer feel like you're not well aware of the algorithm you're using or you're not well aware of the data structure that you're using you will get rejected so you have to show that you understand the algorithm you're using you understand the data structures that you're using and you optimize it so go from brute force start optimizing talk with the interviewer talk about the optimizations you talk about the algorithm you're using talk about how you can optimize it using some data structure heap stack queue whatever it may be and make sure that you completely optimize it from brute force to the point that the interviewer is satisfied communication is key here not just in microsoft but in every other interview you have to be very very good at communicating with the interviewer he has to be satisfied not just with your solution but also with your thought process all right apart from that just sit with confidence answer each question with confidence sit with a smile on your face and trust me the interview will interview will go very 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 well so that's pretty much it again to remind you the link to apply is in the description box and it has just been opened yesterday so make sure that you apply because the sooner you apply the better your chances of getting shortlisted are because sometimes it closes soon if they have a lot of applications all right so everything is in description box and make sure that you subscribe because as soon as there's an off-campus opportunity, you will be seeing it on this channel. Alright, so yeah, let's see you in the next video.